slaves to God, <coughs> and the benefit you reap leads to holiness. So when we are in God, it leads us to holiness, and the result is eternal life. So this whole uh, Romans, book of Romans, um, the first command in the book of uh, Romans is our foundation. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. So that is the um, foundation in this uh, Romans book. And uh, here God in his grace, he has come down, Jesus Christ, the son of God came to earth as Jew and he died and rose again and was filled uh, his, by power of holiness of spirit. And he is in us and he is leads us. So when we are set from, free from sin, we'll become the uh, slaves of uh, God. So what is sin? To disobey the word of God itself is a sin. When God asks us to say, to do something, if we do not obey him, that's a sin. And at home, when we don't uh, lead a righteous life and a peaceful life, uh, because if we do not have him in our lives, definitely we will be um, uh, fall into sin. So what is sin? Uh, <clears throat> but God says, I will set you free from sin. And a moment of this I have read in one of the devotions, uh, a moment of sinful pleasure worth a lifetime of sorrow. Sin hurts others. So when we do sin um, to others, it hurts them. And sin can bring tragic consequences in the lives of others also, especially to our family. David, you know, because uh, Jesus Christ, he says, he is after my heart. He'll do what all I, I want him to do, he will obey. He gave testimony about David. But before that, David, his sin, no? So, uh, David's sin leads to Uriah's death because of uh, Bathsheba. So, uh, we see the death of Uriah in the Bible and, um, and Bathsheba's baby died. And David's daughter, Tamar, violated by her brother, Amnon, and who was then killed by Absalom, who in turn was slain by Joab. But when David confessed his sins to God, and he turned to God that I sinned against you, that in Psalm 51, 1, we say, um, David says, blot out my transgression. So he knows that he sinned against God, and he is confessing himself to forgive his sins. So God has forgiven his sins and made him righteous. And he was with David wherever he goes, wherever he goes for the war or anything. David, he inquired with God and he went. So that time when he inquired with God, inquired means praying to God, Jesus was with him and gave him victory in, a, in his life. So. Um, and the <clears throat> to be alive to God in Christ Jesus, we need the sanctification of our body, same spirit, soul. So we have body, soul, and spirit. So we have to sanctification. Unless we have the sanctification of our body, soul, and spirit, we cannot be the slaves to God. So how can we sanctify ourselves? First by the word of God and the prayer and the power of God. So for that only Jesus Christ, he has given his spirit to us, comforter. So he is in us, no? He is uh, living in us the temp and our bodies have become as the temple of God. So these three we need in our life. The word of God, the prayer life, and the power of God through Holy Spirit we need. And it's not one day process, but continually. So long time back I 
when I come to know the Lord, I used to ask one of the servants, it's enough for, for one day or one month. No, 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 every day you must pray, every day you must read the word of God and you must lead a holy life for Jesus, then only we will be slaves. So when we are slaves to God, he leads us to eternity, not only to eternity, but he gives the um, priority to us to do his ministry. No, he, he will definitely, he will call us uh, when we confess and when we commit us into the hands of God, he will give his uh, ministry to do whatever it is. It's a prayer ministry or counseling. There's so many ministries, missionary ministries and preaching the gospel and so also. And we read that in Ephesians 4, uh, 13, five types of uh, uh, ministries are there, apostolic ministry, prophetical ministry, evangelist, and a shepherd and teacher, five types of ministries. But now we see so many ministries God is giving to the people who looked upon him. And uh, we need four commands <coughs> for our bodies. Now body is, our body is the temple of God. So how can we become the slaves to God? So something God is expecting from us. One is, do not let sin reign in our mortal body. So we are in mortal body. So God is expecting to be holy. And do not let sin uh, reign in your mortal body. That we see in Matthew 5, 27. Eyes, mainly the eyes. So if you see a woman with a lustful eye, you're doing adultery with her in your heart. That's what the Bible says. And the second one, do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness. So sometimes the friends or the other people who are close to us, they will uh, give wrong ideas. Um, they will lead us in a wrong way. That is, we see in Proverbs 1, 10. 10, 11, 12, 13 also, but uh, uh, verse 10, my sinners, if sinners entice you, do not consent, the word of God says. So let us not offer any part of yourself, yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness. Goodness, wickedness. If you are in God, we are good people. If we follow the wickedness, we are the slaves to sin, no Satan. So here God is expecting us, do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness. And the third one, offer yourselves to God as living sacrifices. So every day in the morning, God expects us to praise and worship him. That is, we read Romans 12, verse 2, no? We should give our bodies as the living sacrifices, you know, in worshiping God in truth. And the fourth one, offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. So part, I mean, God is expecting us, um, every part of our body as the instruments. Now sometimes, uh, because we are in flesh, easy to fall into sin. But the Holy Spirit is in us, always He directs us, no? So that's why um, the Acts 1-8, when we read, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be strengthened and you will be witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and all the um, Jerusalem. That's what the Bible says. And he, he guides us what is good, what is bad, and what is sin, what is righteous, Holy Spirit, he leads us. So let us uh, offer our uh, bodies as an instrument of righteousness because our God is a righteous God, righteous, not only righteous, righteous, just God, our God. So how we should be when we are following righteous, just God. So let our bodies be uh, as the living sacrifices to God then we will become the slaves to God. 
and we see here John 5, 14. There we see one man. Uh, he was sick for 38 years. 38 years. So there is no help for him, no comfort to him. Since 38 years, he was lying in the sick bed. And that time, when Jesus was on earth, whoever comes to him, they were healed by God. Whom uh, Jesus has met them, Jesus has healed them. And he says he want not to sin again. So also here he went in search of that person who was sick for 38 years. Yeah, that is uh, John 5, 14. So he spoke to him. He says, I have nobody, no one to help. Before I get into that uh, pool of uh, Bethesda, before the angel shakes the water, somebody will get into the water and they will be healed. So I am helpless, he says. But immediately Jesus says, do you want to be healed? He said, yes. Okay, take up your bed and go. Immediately he took up his bed and went. But again in the temple, he met the same person. Jesus met the same person and he said, do not sin anymore. So he knows we'll fall into sin very easily. But Jesus there, he says, do not sin anymore. And he said to him, sin no more, lest a worse thing came upon you. So if you do again and again sin, it's the worst thing it happens to you, Jesus said. So also in John 11th chapter, his friend only, Lazarus, he died. And for four days he didn't come. He knows that he was sleeping. But when he came, Martha and Maria, they were, um, Martha, she says, if you are with us, he would have not died. Then he said, believe in me. Then he rose him from the death. So that death could not bind him anymore. But after that, that family served Jesus Christ, you know. Then Luke 23, 39 to 43. Will anybody... Here we see Jesus was hanging on the cross towards left and to right. Two thieves were also hanging because of their punishment. <coughs> yeah, 39. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are unable, under the same sentence, we are punished justly. For we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. So that one of the, in the two thieves, one thief, he was um, abusing Jesus Christ. If you are really Jesus Christ, if you have power, you come down from the cross and you save us, he was telling. But the other one says, it's good for us because we have sinned and we are worthy of this punishment. But that man, Jesus Christ, he has done nothing wrong, he said. No? So then he said to Jesus, immediately, no, there is no time. Three of them are going to give their lives on the cross. But this man, the second thief, he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So he's a pleading Jesus to remember him when he comes in his kingdom. So Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. So he gave assurance. He gave the promise. Definitely you are with me. Today itself, at this time itself, you are there with me in paradise. Hallelujah. God is so good to us. No, once we were in sin, we are slaves to sin, but because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice, he came all the way from heaven to earth to save us. 
to save a sinner like me. What I sang the song, no? And yesterday I sang, he saved a, a sinner like me. So also, he, gave, uh, he came to save all the sinners. So for that only, he was obliged and he obeyed the command of God and he sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary. Even though, I mean, in the midst of all the shame and the insults, he knew that which path he's going to, but only one way that because of his sacrifice, the whole mankind to be saved. So because of his grace, and we are set free from sin, he died on the cross. He gave his life. Nobody took him, took his life, but Jesus Christ himself, he gave his life on the cross to fulfill the command of God, the Father in heaven, and to save us from all our sins and to enter into the eternal kingdom, to give us eternal life forever. We will be that assurance we have now, now because we are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ and our sins are forgiven. So I have that assurance and you have the assurance. Definitely when Jesus comes the second time in the mid of the uh, clouds, definitely we will meet him and he will take us the place where he has uh, placed for us and we will be with him forever and ever. Eternal life God is giving. Praise God. May God bless this word. Amen.